Happy Independence Day, Zimbabwe turns 43. Um, you know, so 43 years of self-governance and celebrations are underway in Mount Darwin. Uh, the event represents a platform to remind citizens of the country's national goals. Uh, this year's theme is Yika Inovakwa Nevanavayo. Ilizwe Lakiwa Ngabani Kazi Walo. Once again, Happy Independence Day. It is a segment on the spot, the show that profiles the life of the public figures from Zimbabwe and abroad. Tonight I'm hosting uh, uh, one of the most successful uh, young entrepreneurs um, we have in the country, Muno Mwatina, Muno Zimbabwe. And also he listed, um, he was listed, I mean, in Forbes Africa 30 under 30 of 2021 alongside another um, uh, other influential uh, uh, creatives as well across Africa. So he is the chief executive officer of Energy Plus International, a company uh, that deals with uh, liquefied uh, petroleum gas. He's um, one fella who is very uh, patriotic, you know, about his motherland. He shall be narrating how it all started uh, to uh, where he is now. Uh, allow me to introduce Sheikh Mo Wellington Timburwa, affectionately known as Sheikhi in the business world. It is an honor to have you on the show, Sheikhi. How are you, sir? How are you, say, Ola? How are you? How are you? Ma, 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 kwana pa, pa on the spot. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard a lot of on the spot, and I'm uh, happy to be here. Uh -huh. Greetings to all those that are watching. Uh -huh. I thank you so much for joining in. This moment is very important, mm -hmm. and uh, as you said, we are celebrating our independence. Yes, true. Which happens to be a very special day. Mm -hmm. but thank you so much for having me on the show. No, my thank pleasure. You so much. And uh, just to remind our listeners at home that uh, we are also live on Facebook right now. Uh, Tato Live, so you can check us out on the StyFM Facebook page as well as my Facebook page, DJ All of Seven StyFM Facebook page. So before we dive into our interview, I would like <coughs> to say Happy Independence Day. Indeed, it's a good day for us. As uh, as young men, uh, what does it uh, Independence Day mean to you? Uh, that's 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 a heavy one. That's a heavy one to start with. Mm -hmm. But I would say. Uh, it reminds me of the hard work that was done by our forefathers, mm -hmm. those that fought for the emancipation of our country politically, and those that liberated us from those that used to marginalize mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So it's a day we are supposed to reflect where we are coming from and where we are going. Mm -hmm. And also analyzing is what they fought for, what we are living, or is, is it what they fought for? Is it something that we are maximizing mm -hmm. to also make sure it happens? Yeah. So I think it's a day of reflection and it's a day that we are supposed to take introspection, especially us as the young people. Why I would say so is this. The people that emancipated this country politically, they were between the age of 18, 15, 14, 16 to 30 years. Young people. Yeah, young people. Yeah. But the question is, is the same age, the 15 to 30 or 18 to 30, yeah. doing the same? Are they in the... <laughs> capacity of liberating our country, me probably economically. Yeah, that's a good question as well. So we are celebrating uh, 43 years um, of uh, self-governance, but in your own uh, opinion, uh, Gomasheki, are we really independent as a country? Uh, first of all, I'll say we are politically independent. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we were able to politically liberate ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's why we have our own black uh, governance, we have got our black ministers, we have got people of our race, we have got people who are born Zimbabweans mm -hmm. who are in positions of power. Yeah. But I would not want to lie to say we are economically independent. Mm -hmm. We are not yet economically independent. Though I feel like it's a process and we are supposed to expedite the process because we were able to politically emancipate the mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. But we haven't fully maximized to benefit from the political emancipation mm -hmm. to get it to economical emancipation. So we are politically emancipated, but, but economically Economically, we are not yet there. <laughs> Why is that so? Uh, I would say, maybe I'll take it back from where we are coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, since our uh, independence, you, you remember that after our independence, we had the new government, which was being led by the former president, the late Araji Mugabe. Yeah. And uh, he also nominated people who were Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm. One of the people that I will mention, one of the figures that I will mention is Simba Makon, yeah. who happened to be our first minister of finance. Mm -hmm. If you track back from where we emancipated our country, you are going to realize that we were politically independent, but we were not economically independent. In what sense? We were not in charge of the production of the country. Mm -hmm. This is your mining sector. This is your industrialization sector. This is your commercial sector. The people that were feeding the masses, the people that were doing commercial farming, mm -hmm. those people were not us. Okay. So we had generals who were blacks. We had people, ministers, mm -hmm. permanent secretaries. We had 
ministers of finance where the president was mm. black. Mm. But they then entrenched a couch of materialization in the in the government. Mm. How did they do that? They quickly retired the Peugeot 546 or 406 <laughs> and they got into Mercedes Benz. Yeah. And I believe that's one thing we inherited at the foundation of this country, mm -hmm. which we are still struggling with today. Yeah. So I feel like this is what made us to be where we are. Mm -hmm. We consume more than we produce mm -hmm. as a country, which mm -hmm. we are supposed to deal with whereby we look at our budgets mm -hmm. and we, after we look at our budgets, we look at how much we are spending mm -hmm. to develop our country into capital expenditure projects. Powerful. That's, that's, uh, that's so profound. Thank so you. let's start off uh, from the beginning. You know, uh, you come uh, you come from uh, humble beginning, you know, what means why history and you in Mutare. Mm -hmm. So which part of Mutare is that? Uh, I was born in a very small city called Zimunya. Because Zimunya? Because Zimunya, yes. <laughs> so, Paneka Clinic, Karipa, 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 my shops. So, mm -hmm. that's where I was born. And then I grew up there, and then we relocated from Zimunya mm -hmm. to Dangam from Mtare. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then I did my primary school in Mtare. I also then did my high school in Mtare. Mm -hmm. And also, Kusekondar, no one has to change my schools. But that's yes. how I grew up. And I understand it, Muritum, but menu, you know, Ah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. We are two. I'm the last born. Mm -hmm. The first born is a is a girl. She was born in 1982, and mm -hmm. I was born in 1992. So we are only two. I'm the last born. Oh, yeah, nice one. So you know, how was your your upbringing? Uh, what I would say is my upbringing was quite hard because I was raised by a single mother. Mm -hmm. My father was a soldier, but uh, you know, being a soldier and the, he's one of the people that also fought for this country. And you know, they inherited the culture from the liberation struggle mm -hmm. whereby he had uh, a couple of wives. Yeah. And then my mother was the first wife, but mm -hmm. the other wives that were there. So we grew up with the care of the mother and it passed away, I think in 2000, mm -hmm. when I was still very young. So I was brought and I was born and bred by my mother and mm -hmm. she's a, she, she was a teacher and she's still a teacher mm. in, our public, uh, in our public institutions. And uh, many times you always mention your mother, which shows you know, that uh, you've got special kind of uh, relationship with, uh, with her. Definitely. So, I mean, Pak Zokura Kamagaita in a mom's way, how was life like? Uh, I would say life was not easy to those that really know Manikaland. Why teacher which coach non zi kwadzobo? That school is in the remote area. So what she would do is every Monday morning mm -hmm. around 4 a.m. she would leave home hey. and then she would go there. And yeah. when she goes there, because of the bus fare was not enough, mm -hmm. she would stay there till Friday mm -hmm. and then she would come back home on Friday. Hey. So the whole week, I would spend the entire week myself <laughs> and uh, my grandmother who mm -hmm. happened to be my father's mother. Oh, yeah. She, so I was taking care of my grandmother mm -hmm. and my sister was in the... My sister was in the in university at mm -hmm. St. Patrick's. Yeah. So that's how I grew up. So I grew up knowing and seeing how it is to have lead to, and that's mm -hmm. actually what then mm -hmm. pushed me to venture into trying to get money at a very young age. Yeah. It is very important to understand your, your background so that people Definitely. really appreciate it. Oh, okay. Uh, so how far did you go with your, um, your education? Education, I did my primary school, I did my O levels, I did my A levels. Mm -hmm. Then on A level, I then felt like, you know what, this thing is never going to give me the um, ultimate money that mm -hmm. I want. So I yeah. dropped from A level. Mm -hmm. I then went to Mtare Polytechnic. I first, first of all went to AU. When mm -hmm. I went to AU, I realized, no, 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 this thing is not interesting. Yeah. Then I dropped <laughs> from AU. I then went to Mtare Polytechnic and mm -hmm. then I did uh, diesel plant fitting. Mm -hmm. and oh. Then, when I was doing diesel plant fitting, I then realized, okay, this is how you solve problems. <laughs> and then I dropped diesel plant fitting. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my, my, my educational background. And nice. I was not really good at education. So mm -hmm. it, it was something I couldn't get Also because and dinner one and I got within my environment. Mm -hmm. And I got mm -hmm. Yeah. And I life and died. This one is a professor, this one did this, but I never saw them living a life that yeah. I loved. Oh. So that made me, not that I looked down upon education, mm -hmm. but that made me to reconsider if I really want to walk that walk, mm -hmm. I should go find another path and yeah. then probably live the life that I want. Mm, exactly. I, I see. And uh, you know, Mamba mentioned yeah, Mama, and Drugunzo, I want to know, Kusagango, Mago, who raised well, like in a single parent, each mania mania, good idea. So, what is your message to single parents, you know, who are struggling to make ends meet and provide for, for their children? What I would say is number one, it is only a weak person who mm -hmm. judges a single mother. Yeah. 
Because every single mother out there, if you are to hear their story, it's not a rosy story. Mm -hmm. I know there are some extreme cases whereby some actually choose to be single mothers, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. not easy to be a single mother. Yeah. And if there's any single mother listening to me today, what I would say is that child or those kids you have, mm -hmm. they are a blessing from God. And if you do your best to give them the best life that they can ever have mm. in your capacity, mm. Mm. definitely they will also reward you and they will give you the best life you can have as a mother. Powerful. That's what I would say. Uh, you are one of the you know, young entrepreneurs uh, we have in our country. Mm. Uh, but I would like to believe that uh, you started off somewhere. Mm. How did it all begin? Uh, what I would say is uh, I have so many interesting stories about myself. Mm -hmm. But I would, I, would, I would pick one interesting story that I would share uh, that made me to be who I am or mm -hmm. to be where I am. Yeah. One thing that I realized at a very early age, Ola, was life doesn't give you what you deserve, mm -hmm. but life gives you what you fight for. Yeah. And uh, life is never going to be fair to you if you are going to be complaining about what others have. Mm. I grew up in a family whereby Tangatini Ahama Tangatini Yeah. But there was one thing I always observed. They were not responsible for my own upbringing. Mm -hmm. So I learned at a very young age to say, no matter how successful people around you are, mm -hmm. always understand that they owe you nothing. It yeah. is their money and they spend it <laughs> however they want. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what school fees? Yeah. What zingir was school fees? And you know your mother is doing her level best, mm -hmm. or your parents are doing their level best yeah. to make sure you go to school. Yeah. But mm -hmm. So that that was the moment I realized the day if you ever want to make a mistake, mm -hmm. give the responsibility of your upbringing or your upkeep to another human being who's mm -hmm. not you. Mm -hmm. The day I know mm -hmm. no Yeah. No data <laughs> Yeah. So that was that mental that made me to realize, okay. And then I started to try to understand. Mm -hmm. In my days, it was very difficult. But it was during the time whereby we had high levels of lot shedding. So, where we grew up, we had deforestation. But there was no bankable solution to make sure we the van. Lasina moto kubika, lasina magets. Vana ime option iripo or another alternative. Mm -hmm. That's when I learned of the LPG gas. Yeah, yeah. And I was at the LPG gas each. But kwa kusina kuchu wana, because by that time it was very scarce. And yeah. it wanted to ingrash zai ni. Zai ni tafu. That's how I started. So ndakataka mpano mdera angari po, wandakatu wa ganga ini gas tank. But I know this is also, this is how a gas tank looks like. Mm. And where can I get the gas tank? Mm. By that time, so I then go to Ndara Bandi, no, I'm fine, I'm sure I'm going to go to the court. So I'm going to go to the court, and I'm going to go to the court. I'm going to go to the court, and I'm going to go to the court. But we have a license, and I'm going to go to the license. And I think I'm going to go to the court, so that's how I started. I started. Mm -hmm. So, natenga chitengi changu Jojo. Ndakatanga uchiti chikotu nufila say mangu magas tengis mm -hmm. madiki. Mm -hmm. Kwa tanga uru tengisa, one by one chitengisa, one by one chitengisa, one by one chitengisa, one by one chitengisa. That's how I started to get into it. When was it? Is, I think it was in 2006. Oh, yeah, 2006. Pane, pane kanguwa. Yeah, you were telling me. Have you always wanted to venture into business uh, or you had other plans? A business na andi singa dorizi kuzu kufemili kwa kusi nanga kamburi. Mm-hmm. Family yedu yese kufakuna mdara wangu kusika paneve seva rikuna nas. All of them are soldiers. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in a family whereby if you you ask how to jump, mm -hmm. how high to jump, you don't ask how high, yeah, you just jump. You just jump. <laughs> so that was the upbringing I had. And mm -hmm. when that happened, I realized life ya vaira rama and I didn't like it as well. Mm -hmm. So our time goes zero on my business. Kwa kuru kwa na seguru side rana mai. Kwa kundu kwa kuna seguru wangu prize. Kwa kuna my business. Kwa kuna my prize. Kwa kuna my guy on each. So I then went there. And then don't make a tangle with no, can she marry? Go now, go, but Siravan, go achieve us. I know that. Yes, I said, why did Gaja, Munago, and Gai, but Gai, O Badara, O Gairo, O Badara. So the Gango said, Sagan, you don't know, be Mariagi. I won't go to the Marie Moon, yeah, no Chaka, no me tira, you won't come and you should over my man. Who can multiply as one to Saka Gama Bagidi ten, one of ten was over Maria, by hand, who got a hundred. So can you get one chicken to go to queue? The next thing, Siguro Borders, your Borders, your Gaji too. And then said, Oh, Samuel Mari, you multiply that which you can do, can she in a hundred dollars? It means you get a one million sales, one hundred one million, one hundred one million. Exactly. Wow, that's powerful. And I read somewhere, you know, um, that uh, what inspired you into uh, to venture into, into, into energy field 
was in a court, like mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier, uh, how, and I quote, mm -hmm. how trees in your home village were being cut and used True. as firewood in a way, or, uh, or, um, in a way promoting uh, deforestation, close quote. That's true. So tell us more about, uh, about that. How did you, uh, uh, did that make you feel um, then and now? You see, we have always been a people who are, uh, you see, what makes you make money was by that time, the United Nations was publicizing about my goals. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So there was this goal right around here, de no deforestation, no what, what, no mm -hmm. what, what, mm -hmm. no what, what, no what, what. And by that time, internet was like, yeah, I'm going to say, because it's okay, because I'm going to say, I'm going to and uh, very soon, Zimbabwe is going to be able to get a lot of people. By that time, Emma is going to But Yanga is publicize what Terra needs. Emma is going to be able to get a lot of people. So I realized that the people who are going to be able to get a gap. One of the things that we are going to be able to get a lot of something to get a lot of gas. By that time, climatic change is going to be publicized. And then, this is the information that we are going to be able to get. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you see, even now where we are, Ola, the next biggest man is in climate change. Mm. I, will, I will tell you why I'm saying so. Right now, you hear people, they are now starting to talk about carbon credits, mm -hmm. where they are talking about countries or companies that are emitting more and that are polluting more. Mm. And those countries are now being given a, at least an index to say if they pollute to this extent, if they go above that threshold, mm -hmm. they are now supposed to pay. Yeah. So yeah. any country that doesn't emit a, above their threshold, but they can produce oxygen mm -hmm. according to the density of their forest and according to the project that they have that are clean energy producers. Mm -hmm. Those countries can then sell things that are called carbon credits to mm -hmm. those people that are bigger emitters, which are your uh, airline companies. Mm -hmm. So you find the moment you are ahead of that particular curve yeah. and you have got more information about that curve before mm -hmm. anyone, mm -hmm. you make money. What up in the mall? What was the mall? Murungo Zinzura Muri as well. We're talking to Mkoma um, Sheki Timburwa live on the spot. Uh, so we are coming to you from a private location, like I said earlier. So we are going, I mean, uh, on and on about energy business. Mm -hmm. uh, yet you, have, you, you also have other businesses, you know. True, true. Um, you are the owner of uh, Pico Constructions. Uh, true. Mm -hmm. uh, is that right? Yes, I have, uh, I have also my partner, Rhinos Mauza, who also happens to be uh, a major shareholder of Pico Constructions, which mm -hmm. we are doing uh, housing projects. Mm -hmm. so that's, Do you that's have true. any other business excluding the ones I have listed? I have a couple. I have uh -huh. a couple. Maybe, maybe tell uh, us <laughs> how many businesses do you have in your name? I'm into logistics. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I have a, a logistics company registered in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And we do transportation from South Africa to Zimbabwe, South Africa to Namibia, South Africa to Mozambique, mm -hmm. South Africa to Swaziland. Mm -hmm. That's about logistics. We carry different co products and commodities. Mm -hmm. And then I also have a mining company. Uh, which is gold mining, <laughs> which is uh, chrome mining, mm -hmm. which is copper mining, and also manganese. Yeah, we are going to touch a bit on that uh, gold mining <laughs> later on. That's uh, fine. Yeah, I know your name was, you know, implicated uh, in this gold mafia gang. So, no uh, yeah, so we're going to touch a bit on, on that. That's so fine. I hear you are in your early 30s. Uh, but I would like to be able to hear it from the horse's mouth. I'm 30 he, years old. You're 30 years old. I'm 30 years old. I'm turning 31 on the 9th of May. Wow. Yeah. And uh, but what being the malevolence is like? Not really. But, Not but, really. but no, one who would wonder what happened say at, at, at pet, you know, um, and at what age, you know, did you start uh, your, your your own businesses? That all own our business. Guys, in the country, 16 years. Wow. Right. That I got gas in 16 years, and then mining I started uh, uh, in 2008. Mm -hmm. nine, that's when I started mining. Yeah. And one thing Chando kuna kuzi ola ndeche kuti. The day I want to accept that I could not manage to pay pena. And those days I don't want to go to pena ya kui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe when we get into the issue that I know is very controversial, most people they want to know about that, which is mm -hmm. gold mining. 
I'll show you how it is easy and possible for every Zimbabwean listening to mm -hmm. me right now yeah. to make money with gold mine. Wow. I will definitely prove that. Could you meet a man with gold? I will definitely prove that. 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 So, what are some of the challenges you came across when you started your, your business and how did you? You manage to overcome those the challenges? The biggest challenge is age. Mm -hmm. I got to a point whereby no one took me serious because of my age <laughs> until they got to a point of sitting down with me and hear me speak. Mm. So age has always been my barrier, but I'm glad now that I've been able to break that barrier and I believe it is going to be a barrier that I've broken for a lot of young people mm. out there. Mm. Mm. I've, uh, by God's grace, I've met a lot of presidents. Yeah. And me sitting with them, what always puzzle them is my level of boldness when I'm talking to them. Yeah, yeah. And what brings me to a point of boldness and confidence mm -hmm. is the knowledge and the research that I would have done before I present something mm. to a person who's a dignitary or a high yes. official. Yes. So you see, that was my biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. And then also the biggest challenge I had was being born in a country like Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. which is so much looked down upon by a lot of people mm -hmm. because of the wrong perspective and the wrong narrative that has gone out for mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. has been really been a big challenge. Because yeah. people, there are people, there's a song by Lagi Dube that is called Teach the World, yeah. whereby saying your country is known for the wrong reasons. Mm. There are people who are speaking ill of your country. So if you go out there, you have to deal with those negatives mm -hmm. for you to be acceptable in a particular community or society of yeah. certain individuals. Yeah. So those have been my biggest challenges, but I was able to maneuver through and meander through, and now here we are. Yeah. At one point, at, at what point? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, in your life, mm -hmm. uh, did you realize that uh, you've got? I, I mean, you've made it, and also at least you've achieved some of the goals. I mean, ah, I had a vision. Right now, it's under <laughs> I'm sad, to be honest. With all you have, and sad, it's only a person who sees from outside who things have achieved. Mm -hmm. But if you had to look from internally, from my own blueprint, I've got so many failures, mm -hmm. like a lot mm -hmm. of things that have failed. But I understand where you're coming from. But yeah. what I would say is, Chandino Funga Kuti Ndakagona, and I'm going to use that to my advantage and to the advantage of every young person, mm -hmm. is the access I now have to some of the most powerful networks mm -hmm. and some of the most powerful institutions, which are banking, banking institutions yeah. and funding investment institutions, mm -hmm. including our own government. Yeah. If there's one thing I can say, Dogon Ozuera Maoko, mm -hmm. if I look for any dignitary or any official yes. in any high office, mm -hmm. I can go there and represent the constituents of the young people well, yeah. in as much as I don't come and talk about it mm -hmm. in the public. Yeah. But I've done a lot for the young people in Zimbabwe. Wow. I've done a lot. That's uh, so I've profound. I'm sure Rungo uh, what an interesting, uh, you know, uh, subject. But uh, on your way up mm -hmm. to success, mm -hmm. uh, whom do you owe it to? Like, uh, who helped you see uh, your vision come to life? Uh, firstly, I would say, obviously, we've spoken about that, but I would, I would say my mother. And then I also want to really give, a, my express my gratitude to my own men of God. Mm -hmm. Very popular in this country, mm -hmm. uh, Prophet Makandio. Yeah. Uh, he opened my eyes in a very unique way. Mm. He made me to see the world from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So whatever that I now do or the way I now view the world and execute mm -hmm. things that I've executed, yeah. I owe it to him. Mm -hmm. And then I also want to give credit to uh, people like Se Mataranyika. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot from him. He's a very uh, shrewd business person. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot from people like uh, Patrice Motsepe. Mm -hmm. He's a very shrewd business person. And I am privileged to be one of the people that has learned from him. I've learned a lot from people like uh, Aliko Dangote. Mm -hmm. Very good man. One of the richest men in Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've also learned a lot from Seth Drive Masiwa, mm -hmm. our very own. I've learned a lot from him. And also politically, I've learned a lot from our own president. Mm -hmm. I don't know him from the TV. Mm -hmm. No, nah. <laughs> I know him from a personal level, yeah. and I've interacted with him at different intervals. Mm -hmm. And he has shown me another side mm -hmm. of how life should be done. Yeah. And I've also learned, it's, it's, it's a whole lot of people that I've learned to, and I've also learned a lot from people of my age mm -hmm. that I can mention, Rhinos Mauta being one of them, you've yeah. got Eugene Peters, mm -hmm. you've got, uh, there's a lot that I've learned from. 
and I've also learned a lot from, they are quite a lot, mm -hmm. they are quite a lot. I've also learned a lot from the royal family of Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the crown prince. Mm -hmm. He has shown me a lot from where he came from and how he is living his life mm -hmm. and what it means to be successful. I've yeah. learned a lot. So the list is endless. Endless. Yeah, yeah. that's powerful. When I was growing up, you know, my challenge is, I know you have I mean, here and there, but you know, you know, look up to. So, uh, I'm going to my business. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. What happened? I'm going to talk to you. And the scenario is that I was I remember I did, I, there's a time I didn't understand Kuti my driver no say gas. And the Dagafar was big time. Because gas are not a bomb thing, So the only way you can validate is to be able to put it in a way bridge. Mm -hmm. So you need to know. Because gold at some point, I remember I'm thinking about brass. Hey, you see, you <laughs> gold. Gold in brass is very long. So, about the money I want. Exactly. So, I was in Coco. I was in a lot of online businesses. I remember losing a lot of money, mm -hmm. and uh, but to me, it was not really losing money. It was learning. Learning. Yeah. Yes. And then the uh, construction, I was in Coco. I'm a And then, because I, I I used to believe we can score very much against cement. It means that Masagawa is up and do I didn't Little did I know, good no, no, such a Masagawa Shanda Kumi, or Abba. Ufunga would be Paga, Wagumana Shanda Simi, and I don't go see. So I've really gone through a lot of things that I've really say, okay, mm -hmm. this is it. But I, I don't take it as a, a, as a minus, but education wise. Mm -hmm. But Pandas Mugu, my manager, good recover, and Mugu Varom. Ah, Ologa Farwa, Ogono should recover, no sort of far. You guys of Farwa, Jesu. A paradise will recover. No way that Zunia Zorigo, Tayo, Abata Farwa. So, for someone who has uh, many businesses, uh, how do you manage them? You know, also, how do you uh, do you know that this could be like, like Mataranya Zugu, Kumine, Mataranya Zuma, logistics, GGG? How do you manage the Urona Ola? Change no protector from anything is knowledge. Ukaziyas or wita ukaziza good. Okay, this is mining. Mm -hmm. In mining, we've got so many systems. Like in mining, to those that know, there's what we call SCADA system. SCADA system is an automated system whereby performed by one one to tell us right. Wakuma na rukumaina. This is the ores that zabuda. Kuvapa wa kuisa ma ore beans. Vachipinda ma conveyor belts. Wakuma na ma crushers nechi. That entire system is automated. A person na bana pinda rokuru kumuni ipa. Ipa up. Kushika gold draws on the rabatwa, rice kwa mo, rice kwa ma, rapina ma concentrate, ama concentrate mm -hmm. azo buda, yes. ama carbon. Akuna kusina rogoro kwa Akuna rogoro kwa mwini papu. And uh, because of the, these systems, kwa ane biometric, yotu nusuko jisa pasu, jisa fingerprint mm -hmm. yako, sa fingerprint mm -hmm. yako, dopa yako fura. Mm -hmm. So kufapa kuti papu wako maini, ungato zobiri kwa maybe, kana driver weska veta, mm -hmm. kana rukuchira pasu ya mgodi, wala wana visible, so wana checka body, wana mbomu. But still wa chibuda, wana sejo. So my chances are going to be working on the game. Show me. She will protect and business race. Who's here? So after I'm under cross border, I'm going to try to get a cross border. I'm going in. Just about to shoot. I'm Maria Kat. Just so die, don't die, don't die, don't die. My bero. I'm going to die. I'm a 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 bero. I'm going to die. i am a bero i am Mm, yeah, that's powerful. So, Kune one waga wanda mkoma sheki who want to be entrepreneurs like you, um, but they don't know where to start. Eh, that's true. I wanna, I capital. Uh, what is your advice to them? Uh, maybe my first point is chinozi capital G to most people. No chinja kambi viringi za kutanga business usually. Da ingo zonzi chinozi capital, 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 and capital to most people it's money. You could tank business. Yeah. But I got to a point of learning to say capital is not the money. Mm -hmm. There is what you call intellectual capital. Don't yeah. the, don't yeah. the mm -hmm. What made you to be a brand ambassador of Bekazin mm -hmm. is Ola, mm -hmm. not money. <laughs> yeah. But it is that 
a relationship ya one nayo ni ni bakers in mm -hmm. that can then give you the financial aspect that you might want mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. to start something yeah. so if you are a young person you are listening to me number one go where your ideas are celebrated mm -hmm. Chagalanu, I remember in my days of Orlando, and then I know my tea and the Migos, man. Mm -hmm. I didn't marry anything at tea, three dollars. Then there's a dope ticket rang. Yeah. No pin and the Migos, no garam bog, no man, and the enjoyment. And I never want to spend a sea. I really wanted to understand. Run what's wrong, she take one of the cassa, one of Famba C. Yes. They do but the three dollars and we coffee. No garam, my tea and guys in a piri. Young would can I don't know, but I don't know with the lemon. I take a lemon. Lemon, yeah, I do garam. Mm -hmm. So the more you are exposed to people who are actually making money, mm -hmm. that's the more you are also qualified to make money. Mm -hmm. So if you have got an idea, make sure you have got the right network and you've got the right people that are supporting you in that particular idea to mm -hmm. become the mm -hmm. best. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. those people, if they really like you and like your idea, they will propel you until you get to the person who can then bring the capital funding mm. that can then become the financial mass of the business idea. Wow. And I'm thinking, there's something that I'm working on. Uh, it's still in its development stage to young people who are into mining and agriculture. Mm -hmm. I'm considering, uh, I've been talking to certain people that I've developed relationships with. Uh, these are people, because I know young people, it's very difficult for you to get, uh, to get funding. Mm -hmm whether for mining, whether for agriculture. So you've got brilliant young people that yeah. have got ideas. And those ideas are not materializing because they don't have anyone who can fund them. Mm -hmm. And if they go to a banking institution, they cannot go there and come out with money because they don't have a collateral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to convince some few individuals who are private investors, and some of them are institutions mm -hmm. because of how I've worked with them and how I've developed a relationship with them. So we are going to have something, if I'm just praying it works, we are going to have a situation whereby any young person wants mm -hmm. to do agriculture, mm -hmm. whether it's tobacco, whether it's wheat, whether it's sugar cane, mm -hmm. we are going to make sure I use my influence mm -hmm. and my own capabilities to be your collateral. Yeah. You go there, you get funding, they give you inputs, working with our, with our agri tax officers. Those agri tax officers are there to make sure they monitor the project if it's an agri mm, project. Mm. And then you implement, you're given inputs, not cash. Yes. You're giving equipment and inputs. Once you're given those inputs and equipment, mm -hmm. you then do the farming. And then we avoid side marketing. Side marketing is whereby mm -hmm. So we are still working on that. The same thing into mining. We are going to fund some other young artisanal miners, whether it's going to be my compressor, my jack hammer mm -hmm. and stuff. So we're working on that particular thing. Once it's up and running, I will definitely come here probably if you allow me yes. to come and then yeah. we publish it and we support other young people. Yeah, I, I want to see more young people in agriculture. Mm -hmm. I want to see more young people in mining sector. Mm. And I've also gone a step further mm -hmm. to engage our government and the responsible offices mm. in that particular regard. Yeah. And I believe I've received a very welcoming response mm -hmm. and they are willing to support us. And I'm going to make sure I use my own influence to do that and to see sure to make sure that thing gets to move. Mm -hmm. Whether you are going to be Zanpi for mm -hmm. whatever political party, whether triple C or what, mm -hmm. it doesn't care, it doesn't matter as about the political affiliation. As long as you're a young person mm -hmm. and you qualify mm -hmm. and your idea is bankable, mm -hmm. definitely we'll support you. Wow, that's powerful. And uh, I, I came across an article uh, in the Herald mm -hmm. uh, where you mentioned that uh, you draw your inspiration from uh, uh, businessman Strive Masiwa. True. Uh, have you ever, you know, met him? I haven't met him in person. But you should Definitely. <laughs> uh, Definitely. What is it that uh, he does, you know, that inspires you? Uh, what inspires me about him is the fact that he was born in this country. Mm -hmm. And he was able to rose through the ladder of success until he became a recognizable billionaire. Mm, mm. And he's a Zimbabwean. Mm -hmm. That alone to me makes makes his character fascinating. Yeah. I a, anyone who has got something that I don't have all mm -hmm. knows something that I don't know. <laughs> 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 That's me. Wow, that's powerful. So you were shortlisted under uh, 100 uh, most inf influential, you know, young leaders in Africa by Pan African Youth Leadership. And uh, how did that make you feel, knowing that uh, there are people out there, mm -hmm. you know, who actually recognize uh, your work? You know what? One thing that that does to you, it encourages you not to give up. Mm -hmm. 
So when you see yourself being listed among the most influential young hundred people in Africa, mm -hmm. then you know, ah, I'm doing something right. So yeah. no matter the negative uh, words that are being said about you, mm -hmm. because any day, the moment you become successful yeah. in any way, mm -hmm. people are always going to talk. <laughs> So you, you get to get your, your, your comfort from mm -hmm. those that also clip hands for you. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what I would say. Yeah. That's what I would say. On the 1st of uh, June 2021, your name appeared in the Forbes Africa 30 Under 30 magazine that appreciates, you know, and celebrates um, young entrepreneurs and, Afri uh, I mean, and influential uh, crea uh, creatives mm -hmm. in Africa. First mm -hmm. of all, I would like to say, Makoro Koto, you know, as a senior so. because Thank it's so. not easy, you know. Uh, it could to be in that uh, magazine as well. How did that come by? Uh, <laughs> you see, what they do, their, their criteria is very robust. Mm -hmm. So they, they get to, if you are nominated, mm -hmm. they get to contact you. Mm -hmm. They say, are you Ola? And then you say, then they say, we want to do our due diligence mm -hmm. before we list you in our, in our magazine. magazine. Yeah. So you have to comply according to their listing. Mm -hmm. So there is Panama police clearance. Mm -hmm. They would want to get to know your banks. Yeah. Who are your bankers? Mm -hmm. Don't you have any criminal record? So their 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 due diligence is robust. Yeah. And I believe the reason why they do that is because they have a brand and a name to protect. Mm. So they cannot afford to put a person who's a criminal in their, in their in their in their magazine. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when they uh, when they when when we started in the process, I thought it's just a walk in the park mm -hmm. until they started digging. Yeah. I wa. Until they, they are satisfied. Mm -hmm. When they are satisfied, then they invite you to go and meet other people who would have also qualified. Mm -hmm. And then they have a particular group amongst the qualified that mm -hmm. then they choose to say these ones are going to be the cover. Wow. So it was really an exciting journey. And mm -hmm. it also helped me to then also widen my network of influence. Mm. Mm. And I also gained access to certain offices I couldn't know <laughs> because of that, uh, that listing. So yeah. it really helped me a lot to be where I am. And according to Forbes Africa, you know, uh, the young people who made it uh, to the list are change makers in courts. That's true. Uh, and uh, what change have you done uh, in your country? Uh, I normally don't want to talk about this, but... I've paid school fees for a lot of kids, mm -hmm. a lot of people. Some of them are actually older than me. They are going to university. Yeah. And I pay for their tuition fee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've also been able to do projects that do the replantation, since it's something I'm passionate about, mm -hmm. the replantation of our deforested mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. I have a program whereby we do replanting of trees. Mm -hmm. And then I've been able to support other people, medical-wise, mm -hmm. uh, not to me, I won't mention names. Yeah. And I've been able to support our country with some of the the the, 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 the equipment that they need mm. medically. Medically. Just that we don't come out and talk, but <laughs> we are doing a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know our works are going to talk for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm, there's one area I'm praying to God that God gives me the capacity. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy because also, like I said, I, also, I always use my, my, my influence in certain systems. Mm -hmm to ask and to find out. One of the things that I'm really passionate about and keen that may God bless me with more money mm -hmm. is our cancer, our cancer yeah, and our cancer. heart mm. our department. And uh, something is coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, with many youths, uh, we have resorted to, to drugs, you know, uh, drug abuse uh, because of uh, lack of uh, employment. Uh, you see, one thing that I can say, it's something that is very painful. Mm -hmm. I've gone to Mbare. I've gone to Sakuba, yeah. uh, where I grew up, mm -hmm. and I've been in these environments, and uh, it's really a sad situation. Mm -hmm. But I feel like one thing that needs to be done is we need to create more enviro more conducive environment for the young people. Mm -hmm. We used to have my Ataitima sports clubs, mm -hmm. Tijikura. Oh, I want to go in my Beatles. Yeah. Every city is a So, a sporting activity where young people are not games. I believe those are some of the things that we are supposed to resuscitate. Yeah. And we are supposed to capacitate our vocational training centers mm -hmm. whereby people, young people can go and be trained. Mm -hmm. 
inini ndi kakudza ora ndaka foira chikoro mm -hmm. for a first panaka nyora all level ndaka bana 3 mm -hmm. pandazo ita shungu bana no dzokurodza vanda verenga ndega vanda zo pass mm -hmm. but kufoira chikoro zvero ndo kuguma kupe yeah. and right now where we are going mabasa akuto badara mm -hmm. mabasa emaoko kudarika mabasa, mabasa e e office yeah. so if we can capacitate our vocational training institutions to have more carpenters, mm -hmm. to have more mechanics, to have more people who are welders, to have more boiler, ma bo boiler makers, mm -hmm. I think it will help our young people. Yeah. And also to capacitate our police so that they can have the rightful equipment mm -hmm. that they can use even to detect mm -hmm. that this is cocaine. Yeah. Because I know there's a challenge that time. Scientific equipment that we really require for us to identify that this is actually cocaine is a shape. In your own uh, uh, opinion, mm -hmm. how do we keep the issue of uh, drug abuse uh, amongst our youth? About why now Gasung? That person is a monster. Someone like that is a monster. <laughs> So if there is anyone who's doing those activities, my plea to the government is that if there is anyone mm -hmm. and if they can have proof to validate that this person is doing this, mm -hmm. a person like that should not sit amongst human beings. That what is your, your secret to uh, success? <laughs> my secret is, uh, what I would call my secret is, my secret is I don't talk too much. Mm -hmm. I, I say less than I know. Mm -hmm. And... Anyone who has something that I don't have, mm -hmm. I always want, I'm fascinated yeah. with those people. I'm fascinated 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 with those people. doing a very good job for yourself. Uh -huh. You know why? It's because anyone is going to get a chance to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So most people in Zimbabwe are going to see whether they are an artist. They are going to be 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 an artist. Anyone who is doing extremely well mm -hmm. in their area. I don't hesitate to study them. Mm -hmm. I don't. Wow. So that's my secret here. Guys, we're going to start with the guys. We're going to start with the guys. Whether it's socialite. If you don't know what socialite, you don't know what to do. We're going to start with the guys. We're going to start with the guys. Why are you an audience? That's powerful. That's powerful. And one of them, someone in their early 30s like you, at our CEO, do you know what you're doing? You know, uh, just to put it out there, mm -hmm. have you ever associated uh, yourself with any of that um, or any other in, in, in illegal activities? Yeah, kuromba, you know, illegal activities. That is a kuromba, so I should understand. But you know why you are not just always so tired with naga kuromba. Oleo keta chin, muupenyo wako. If you do something in your life, and there is your neighbor who thinks they have tried everything that can be done, mm -hmm. but they don't have your results. Yeah. The only thing that comes into their head is that probably which they have never done, mm. which is witchcraft mm -hmm. or illegal deals. Yeah. So th it's easy for them to start saying, shekaka romba kanto olaka romba, because mm -hmm. according to their vocabulary or experiences, mm -hmm. The only thing that they have never tried, mm -hmm. and the most unfortunate thing is they think they have tried everything. Mm -hmm. They are not humble enough to come and ask you, Kutoka how Kutasi. are you having these results? Mm -hmm. People, they don't come and ask. Yeah. But they rush to conclusions, and then after they conclude, they come up with narratives. But mm -hmm. I'm not responsible for what you say, mm -hmm. even if you say in the mm -hmm. As long as I'm able to make ends meet and put food on the table of mm -hmm. my workers, yeah. then ah, happy days ahead. Baba. I don't even care what people say. <laughs> I believe you're a low-key motivational speaker. Do you agree? Yeah, people say so. Mm -hmm. People say so. I, I want you to confirm this because uh, Niniu, I am not sure. Uh, are you a pastor? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. Definitely. M ministry, which ministry definitely. do you go to? <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said earlier, my man of God is Prophet Makandiwa. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think in two thousand and. Uh, around 2010 11 mm -hmm. i went to bible school yeah and then when i went to bible school i went there i studied the bible learned theology mm -hmm. i'm one of the most it's not right but i know i'm one of the most intelligent theologians you can ever wow come yeah 
Uh, so I learned theology after learning theology because I was going to UFIC and I'm mm -hmm. still going to UFIC. Mm -hmm. I was then also given an assembly. Mm -hmm. So I actually once pastored in assembly at some point. Wow. So I started from Chipingi, uh -huh. right? <laughs> right? So I, I, I became a pastor in Chipingi. Mm -hmm. I learned uh, how to be a pastor mm -hmm. in UFIC. Yeah. And it was also because of my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother is a preacher, mm -hmm. my biological mother. Okay. So I lived under the tutorship of a preacher. Mm -hmm. And then when I was growing up, I then also went to the Bible school. And when I went to the Bible school, but pakata papani panaka mbo ita nubu zekuto naro nubu cha chayo before I went to the Bible school. Okay. But one day I then came back and I saw my mother crying because of my attitude of not going to church. Mm. So that really touched my heart. Then uh, I went to Chipinge. Now in UFIC, I became a pastor in Chipinge. Academia Nats, and I must say that's one thing I've also done. Academia Nats, mm -hmm. yeah. I've done big in Academia Nats, wow. and uh, most people don't know about that, mm -hmm. yeah, because I don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Then I left Chipinge, I went to Kunuzu Bema Valley, mm -hmm. Matanuska, yeah, Kuma Banana. We have a lot of people in the environment, yeah, a good year, and I'm going to be offering a chin, I'm going to be a banana, which is exactly the guy and the Kunuzu Kateri Gunyanga, the Kabaka Kateri Gunyanga, and Gazan Gore Edwin Mine. Do Pandaka Tanga with the exposure, I go read the Majibot. She knows the Gore Edwin Shanda so because I was now a pastor in an environment where gold mining yeah. was happening. Yeah. Then from there, I, I became, a, I was a pastor also in Mtare. Then mm -hmm. I was relocated and then I went to Chegutu. Mm -hmm. Chegutu now, I now access to Chegutu and Chegutu is a mining town. Yeah, Pepe sure. is a mining town. Mm -hmm. Kadoma is a mining town. That's when I then fully established as a miner mm -hmm. and also into gold mining. And then I pastored and I did a couple of crusades, mm -hmm. actually. I did uh, my, uh, uh, one of my biggest first crusades was in 2016. Mm -hmm. It was in one of the stadiums in Chegutu. We had wow. an attendance of about 40,000. Wow, wow. That and was then huge. I did another one in That's 2018. Huge. But mm -hmm. it's because of the mentorship I received from mm -hmm. Prophet Makandiwa. So the issue of the word and the issue of the numbers was mm -hmm. not difficult yeah. for me. So, uh, and also the grace that is upon the ministry mm -hmm. is the same grace that I utilize in that particular space. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we fast forward, we went into COVID and I'm still a pastor, mm -hmm. but now I'm not an active pulp pulpit mm -hmm. pastor. Yeah. So I'm a pastor by title and mm -hmm. I'll never lose that title because yeah. you are a co you're calling. Not, not really. Mm -hmm. Not really. You see, when you are in a ministry that is as big as UFIC, mm -hmm. one thing that is there, we have got so many great pastors mm -hmm. that we have. And uh, the prophet is mentoring and tutoring a lot of pastors. Mm -hmm. So you have to also accept other brothers to also do that so that they get exposure and then they grow into ministry. Yeah, yeah. Not because you can never be busy for God. That, mm -hmm. that, that's impossible. Yeah, yeah very that's true. impossible. Uh, Mastritsumu, uh, they say you imitate uh, prophet uh, Emmanuel Makantiwa. You know, from the way you dress, uh, the way you talk, the way you walk. Uh, ever heard of this? I've heard that about that a lot of times. But uh, is, is that true or what? Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. A great, a, a great leader is a product of another great leader. Mm -hmm. A great uh, DJ like you mm -hmm. is a product of other great DJs. Mm -hmm. And if I ask, I'm to ask you now, you can give me a list. A list, yeah. So I've stayed in his environment long enough mm -hmm. to the point whereby whatever that I do, I do it according to the script or the stanza that I've seen. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I can say. Oh yeah. Uh, I've stayed, I've stayed in this environment for mm -hmm. a very long time. And yeah, so is he like your, your spiritual father? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, what is the purpose of uh, a spiritual father? Eh, that's, a, that's a good one. You see, in as much in life, we have what we call life coaches. Uh, we have got business mentors. Mm -hmm. If you go back into the Bible, you realize that we've got characters like Elijah, mm -hmm. we've got characters like uh, Elisha. If you remember, Elisha was a person under Elijah. Mm -hmm. You have got people like Paul in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And Timotheus was a person who, Paul at some point, he said, am I not your father in Christ? Mm -hmm that I've preached the gospel until Christ was formulated inside of you, mm -hmm. which means for Timothy to give his life to Christ, mm -hmm. it was because of the preaching of Paul. Mm. So because you are a person who has been fed the word of God by a particular individual until you receive Christ, until Christ is formulated, mm -hmm. that person who has done that job becomes your 
spiritual father. Mm -hmm. So it's not a biological fatherhood aspect, but when I want spiritual guidance, mm -hmm. consultation, yeah. and tutorship, a mm -hmm. person who takes care of my spiritual being, mm -hmm. a person who makes sure when I'm going through the most, when I'm going mm -hmm. through troubles, mm -hmm. I go to him to say, you know what, Baba, I'm going through a lot. Mm -hmm. I need your prayers. Yeah. Because for me to be where I am, I'm a product of prayers. Mm -hmm. I go to that particular individual, and within our country, we've got so many spiritual father figures. Mm -hmm. We can talk about Baba Goti. Mm -hmm. We can talk about Baba Mwaja. We can talk about Mats Baba Wimbo. We can yes. talk about Baba Wikumbungwe, uh, ZCC, mm -hmm. ZCC, Bishop Mdent. Mm -hmm. All those people are spiritual father figures that we have. Yeah. The same way we've got political godfathers. Mm -hmm. The same way we've got business godfathers. Mm -hmm. That's the same way we've got spiritual fathers who are in different spaces. Mm, yeah, I that's don't know powerful. if I've explained it. Yeah, 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 very well. So let's talk about your love for fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, you said uh, that uh, if you were not a businessman, mm -hmm. uh, you'd want to start a fashion business. Is that correct? Fashion, we are in the other movie. I must treat you. Fashion, <laughs> fashion and Egon. I'm going to F Fashion and Egon, mm -hmm. you know, I respect people who are fashionistas. Mm -hmm and I respect their work, mm -hmm. and I appreciate fashion. Yeah. I really appreciate fashion, and God has been blessing me enough to be able to test some of these good brands. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 you can start to appreciate mm -hmm. the creativity of people. Yeah. But you can see some of the business of fashion. You can see some of the machines. Yeah. My company is a fashion. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Yeah. Adzi, uh, are you married? Yeah, happy. To. Happily yeah, married. Happy, happy. Uh, when do you strike? I mean, uh, strike uh, the balance from work, yeah. a family, traveling, and uh, social life. Ah, uh, paka home as well. Ipapa paka home. You know why paka home? Eh, I'll be very honest. When you become a business person, or when you start to pursue your vision and mm -hmm. your goals, to strike a balance is really difficult. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I've always told myself is that that which I'm doing shall at some particular point make those that I love realize why I was not available at certain particular moments. Mm -hmm. So the balance is not easy, but I try. But the balance is not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not really easy. It's yeah. not. It's not. Then, Mukoma Shekir, get you from Mongolia or Gambia or Okay. To pin the panyaye gold up. Um, come on, shake. Pane that picture like a trend. Apa gadi yo chizwa rukumba. Pane omanu waga mirror that don't want to trust. Pina pa data ga. Trust. Pina pa Facebook. So I get it. I know that. No, this is the time for you guys uh, to log on to our Facebook pages. Uh, we are live talking to um, uh, business uh, men. Uh, shake it, Timburu. What now? Pana ba. Now, pane nyaya kabuda yekuti mimi come on, shake. Paga abula picture riki ga circulator. Yekuti mimi paga wane one ton. Ye gold, ye kanya wa zita renyu and debt. Andi timu kuma ashegi. Timbo tanga ni pona tajuta ni ma mind ya. Icho kwa de, de kuti that picture de rangari ni ni ni. Chitangere ba bab. You see, you see, what I can say, Ola, is firstly was the way that whole thing was done. Number one, the most unfortunate thing that happened there was there was no one who really seeked clarity before they posted that. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, I'm a miner, and what I do is mining, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I'm a person who has done mining not only in one country, <laughs> right? Even outside? Even outside. Mm -hmm. So for a person to just wake up and then claim that there is looting happening, mm -hmm. you cannot loot a ton, mm -hmm. Ola. <laughs> But a I think a ton, a ton is not is not a job. Do but I got my KGs. I I I wouldn't think people would say it's looting. And the one who is there, I'm going to loot a ton. Mhm. When he goes nuts, and if you and if you But what I can say is, this is maybe I'll conscientize people. Mm -hmm. This country is no, made no, but it before you go there, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you haven't answered my question clearly. Mm -hmm. Was it yours, the one turn uh, of God, uh, which circulated the, that picture? Yeah. Uh, was it really yours, or maybe it was fabricated? Before you go to the conscientizing, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you see, if I say it's mine, I would have. Uh, 
how, how can I put it? If I say this is mine, mm -hmm. right? The issue is not is neither nay or not there, right? You get the point. <laughs> I, ca I can't I can't come here and say that was my goal. That mm -hmm. was not my goal, mm -hmm. right? Number one, and where he got that video, he also <laughs> needs to tell me where he got that video <laughs> with my name, right? In as much as I'm into gold mining space, mm -hmm. but that particular one, mm -hmm. I wish if I had that one. Mm -hmm. If I had that one, uh, well, are you so in other words, you're saying it doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. It didn't. So, so it was, was it like fabricated that it was there was a name tag on it. Exactly, that's true. Uh -huh. I saw, I saw the video. Yeah, but that was not my gold. <laughs> that wasn't mine. <laughs> and you see, the most unfortunate thing that happened was, and I, I think I saw something the following day mm. that also had the name of the person who claimed I had gold. Yeah. And then I actually wanted to hear him, his own <laughs> opinion to say, was that his? Yeah. Right. Because mm -hmm. I think I saw 800 kgs mm -hmm. and it was written his name. Right. <laughs> so you see, but the unfortunate thing that comes from there, Ola, I'll be very honest with mm -hmm. you. There's so much pain that comes from a person throwing in something before they validate. Mm -hmm. Right now, there are people who think Sheikh is moving around with gold that is worth 60 million. Mm, mm, mm. Just imagine the threat of security threat it is to my own personal life. Mm -hmm, Simply mm -hmm. because someone didn't do due diligence mm -hmm. until when they make a claim, yeah. right? And they go into social media, they mm -hmm. throw this thing into the social media mm -hmm. and into the social platform. Imagine how much that is simply because they are trying to push an agenda of claiming that there is looting happening. Mm. And before you validate facts, you go out there and you're saying something. Mm -hmm. I used to have high regard of the person. Yeah. Until the day he attacked me like that, I was like, what? <laughs> and then I started realizing, okay, this is actually his narrative. He mm -hmm. also went against the uh, Enzo Aisha. Yeah. He claimed Enzo Aisha is running for, politi for, for, for a political post. Yeah. Only to realize that Enzo came and said, I never ran for any political. <laughs> but imagine people who love Enzo for being Enzo mm -hmm. and is making him paint the political brush, mm -hmm. which is not legit. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he does that. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's very wrong. But when it comes to gold mining, yes, I do gold mining, but that particular one, hey, it I wasn't, mean, uh, it, it wasn't, wasn't yours. It wasn't. Yeah, to put that up, I don't know, Sheki, Tapach Kamche, yeah, the gold that is, but Zagat in it, say. But what is the, yeah, the procedure, the proper procedure? You know, you could visit gold uh, from one country to another. Skamazwana Mari Kwaziri. What's the process like? All right. It, 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 number one, it differs f with the country, mm -hmm. all right? From our own country is Zimbabwe. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. Every Zimbabwean citizen has a right mm -hmm. of being a gold miner. Yeah. Every Zimbabwean citizen has a right of being a gold buyer. Mm -hmm. But not many people pay attention to what's happening. Ola, do you know that for you to have your own mining claim in Zimbabwe, it costs you less than $2,000. Okay. You now have your own mining prospectors license, mm -hmm. and the prices you pay them in our local currency, which mm -hmm. is the ZW. Yeah. And if you check that money with the rates where they are, mm -hmm. it's actually cheaper for you to have your own mine. Yeah. So you go to the Ministry of Mines, You up, if you want to be a miner, there are different ways to get into mining. Mm -hmm. You can get into mining as a miner, you can get into mining as a supplier of consumables. Mm -hmm. These are ma overosi, mm -hmm. ma explosive. Do you want to get into my sponsor? Exactly, mm -hmm. not my sponsor. Mm -hmm. Kutotenge sasa nzuri chanzo na matiki, oh, yes. matochi, mm -hmm. maovorosi, magambutu, maropu, ma changfa, ma 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 compressor, ma jack hammer. You can get into mining mm -hmm. just simply by supplying the consumables of miners. Okay, you're becoming a person who's in the value chain of mining. Mm -hmm. You can get into mining as a service provider. Mm -hmm. You can be a quantity survey. You can be a surveyor. Wana mm nopega -hmm. wala. You can be a geologist, you can be a metallurgist. Mm -hmm. That's if you, if you are willing to go to school to get, you can be a blaster. Mm -hmm. You can just go to, to, to the school of mines, you learn how to blast. Mm -hmm. You are officiated and you are given a license, you get into mining. You are only paid to go there, you are a miner, mm -hmm. you are benefiting from the mining yeah. aspect. You can also get into mining as a miller. Can I go to Mugai? Yeah. So I don't get as guys who are going to go to Mugai. Yeah. Why do you end up with a guy who is a guy who is a guy? In mining as well, Kuni Van Vanezi Gaios House and then the custom milling. So if you custom milling, it means with the Danes Gaios Angu, Nenda Mazo, Dresa milling site young. Van Vanema mines are a small scale artisan or miners, Vasina Marie Guna Utenga Zu Gais. Van Wepa Miu Pagu Tanga Gaia. And it has been made easy because now one. 
kwani mama miu kuni mama miu kuni ma chilling muse kuni ma stem muse kuni ma bow miu then kuni ma big bow muse mm -hmm. right so you can enter into mining as a person who's doing custom milling only so what it means with yo oloka chira 100 100 tons zako mhm kana 10 tons zako zine o yako iwe unaya ku miu kwangu iwe yeah. waya ku miu kwangu obva wagaya ukagaya ku miu kwangu ka vane 200 grams iwe mm -hmm. inini am guaranteed of getting 200 grams plus from the free gold ya wasia because mm -hmm. gold rine malevos yeah. kune nunzi free gold wala ndiri mkuru kwa zonzo kutu naro kune nunzi free gold rile kutu rika panwa muzamba rino unika kutu iri igori mm -hmm. right kwa ita rimere kutu auri uoni ni mazisho mm -hmm. arito bakti kipa sinama chemicals mm -hmm. So kana kuna nuno koroko za kuti kune nunzi free gold ne nunzi flying gold mm -hmm. flying gold ndore kuti even mukaenda pa miu pa ma mates vaya pa arebatiki rinzo irezo chini kichienda rimu rinzo bato kwa ne mercury mm -hmm. but still radaro aripere gori de rinzo zambara mchini kichienda mm -hmm. rimu ndore rinzo daba kuma tanks manjiku nuno sign edition yeah. unono bato fiti mwe gold diko kuso kwa wewe all lie wewe wa maina gold drago ya kuzu maina kwangu wa wewe kama maina gold drago wa yako miu kwangu inini wa yako miu kwangu andi tiga Wakuno mila wenda ni 200 grams zako iwe. Mm -hmm. But wandi si la zingwe at least 150 grams. Mm -hmm. Zisi zinga rika vike zuri free. Yeah. Ende uka wayoka mila kumaini kubangu wa uye ndini matagago. Uh -huh. Matagago ndaya kukushika wa suka ba maini bangu. All right. Ba miu bangu. Uka mila ma, ma shanga echi bagaya. Ano sara kumrizuji? Kumrizuji. Kumrizuji. Right. Akata usi dama kreji ndi. Ndi. Ndo se mune kumaini ngegu. Mm -hmm. Uka uya iwo mvani free gold ya kunu ya ni 10 tons. Wadzoke wani 200 grams. Saka mnozo zi kutisa sayi manji. Kumita kune zi mwenye. Tapeza. Well, I'm not saying it depends. Can I wash it up a level? We could have an exporter's license, mm -hmm. right? Which is two hundred thousand yeah. US dollars. Mm -hmm. Can only exporter's license. Then it means you are now allowed legally by the government. Could mm -hmm. you? Zawuni mine and zawu producer. Mm -hmm. You are allowed to go out there and look for better buyers mm -hmm. because you have been able to do due diligence. You have employed people yeah. you have in the value chain. Yacho repo, my taxes and everything that is required by the mm -hmm. government. You have paid, mm -hmm. but you are now fetching for a better price. Mm -hmm. You get a license for that, mm -hmm. and the government do all the due diligence for you to qualify to become a person who can go and sell gold mm -hmm. in abroad. Okay. Okay. Dubai. As you know, that. Rana Rana is maybe you are doing it on behalf of someone. I do not know what I am doing. 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 I, I, it's uh -huh. better to be a tail of an elephant than to be an to be head of an elephant. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So if I, I I know the people who are runners, mm -hmm. but. I haven't really encountered that in my own life. Mm -hmm. But the problem that happens is that people look at your association. Mm -hmm. And when they look at your association, they put conclusions before they ask. Exactly. 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 I just do whatever I do in my own capacity <laughs> as an individual. And that's how I've been doing it. And it's mm -hmm. been doing very well. You are a miner, not a gold smuggler. No, 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 no. Why, why do you smuggle when you can actually buy it and you can sell it to mm -hmm. the responsible authorities and mm -hmm. you make money? Mm -hmm. Why? Anything that makes you greedy, Ola, mm -hmm. that thing will destroy you. Greed in any transaction mm -hmm. in your life, the day you become greedy, mm -hmm. you are doomed. So in any, if I can be able, I can give you a very good example mm -hmm. right now, Ola. Once you have a buying license, right? Kuni had not spot price. Mm -hmm. Spot price in Doya at Noti, you would take an anti-pass port banner. Yeah, exactly. Put the Munzupana Vandiga. Kuni knows the spot price, you would take a sangana kuma sangu, Panin on the spot price, you would take an ego. Yeah, right. So if I have a, if I, if I have a buying license mm -hmm. that I get from the responsible institutions within our country, in Nini do not allow you to go into Zimbabwe, you say. Could anyone mm -hmm. argue Chira Goride? Mm -hmm. The illegal animal license are yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Right now, if you go the further you go away from Harare, mm -hmm. you can actually go to places you can go and buy gold for forty dollars. Wow. Gram. Right? Mm -hmm. So nika sukan katenga gold rangu in ni forty dollars per gram. Mm -hmm. Do enda ku fidelity, let's say Nazarun think is varu tinga gold is fidelity mm -hmm. at fifty two dollars or at fifty seven dollars. Mm -hmm. Look at that margin of profit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you gonna know we ran the moon, I think it's a gold that I got in the nan gorid, the numbers and didn't license and don't go tinga gorid. On the pan price yet I ran egg sangu, do go now vine doctor a risk of vanilla what to vana recogo, do ya naran do no flow that fidelity mm -hmm. didn't profit. Yeah. Sakafungan cutting hundred grams per day, profit and ten dollars in Maria. I marry want. 
the point. That's a lot of money. So most out. people, they don't take time to investigate these things and make sure they benefit from what the government has done. Mm -hmm. The fact that you am allowed this isn't to go and get a license and buy. Other countries, mm -hmm. citizens are not allowed to buy gold. Mm. They are not allowed. Here, fidelity has made it possible for us as citizens. Because everyone can. So, if you have a criminal record, you can get a criminal record. You can get a criminal record. You can get a criminal record. You can get but people make it as if it's so difficult, it's so mystical. There's nothing mystical about mm -hmm. that. But in Dogo, so far, man, you go get a bunch. Yeah. Dogo also got things about brass man. Oh, right. Right. So you have to now know good, no dance was say, mm -hmm. no treat was say. Lushansa say nitric acid is this. Yaji, ya, ya, charge you call Jibasa man. So I went that big. Well, I go advance. Exactly. Once we go Zia, we want to say we don't want to go Naga. Poi, we want to go this one. We want to go watching it. That was another thing. I want to grim his food. We want to go. Thank you. I am sure one but as number we are not going to So to right now live on Facebook. What I would want to say is to my brothers and sisters that are watching. Bob Male once said, complaints are prayers to the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As much as you complain against whatever you can complain about, mm -hmm. that will never change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Gati ndi nori mawiti, tu bazi ndori mawiti sayi. Ije ije ndi kunye peri ola. The only industry ili kukwa nsauti, ili kukwa nsauti nyika edi wangi ni iwane forex i gold mining. And that's, this is the most prime time for almost every Zimbabwean to at least own a gold claim. And I can tell you ola is amparting as we are concluding. Do you know to ola waga pega mine yako, unopo ya nanti certificate. Certificate ila kafana ni title dizi emba. Okay. Right. Hapana chino kurambi za kutu unopega 100 hectares. Washing this amount deeds are my certificates. You are is because it's now bankable. Mm -hmm. You have been mm -hmm. given the right by the state to use that land because yeah. it belongs to you. She mm -hmm. So I've already told you an easy way to mm -hmm. get a farm mm -hmm. with the title deed. Yeah, and you're saying it's not bankable, mm -hmm. but once you have a mining certificate, yes. it's bankable. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say in, 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 in closing. And how can people get in touch with you? Uh, ah, I have a <laughs> but maybe by Facebook, can mm -hmm. one sorry, can, but uh, that, that, that part is very difficult. Yeah. In as much as I want to be available to people, mm -hmm. but I can't be available to everyone. To everyone, and yeah. Those that want to get to me, uh -huh. definitely they will. Uh, yeah. yeah, definitely they will. Yeah, it has been good, uh, you know, hanging out with Ngoma Sheki Timburwa, uh, a businessman and also an entrepreneur. Wa galaru mune zi mining sector man zi wama logistics zi manonga nunga oze kudzi zi zaneku nukisisa. Uwe zi waji clear eh, pa one or two issues uh, zangadzi ji tauru wopamu soru wama koma uh, Sheki Timburwa. My name is DJ Ola Seven Owen, we've come at Ondo. So I'm back again on radio tomorrow, uh, same time between 6.30 and uh, 9. Tomorrow I'm hosting Pastor G on the spot. Uh, hey, on a, a journey, I was so a good guy in the soga. Italia took butter moyo, Manguan and Dora Trinity Tower. Now, so you can follow us on Instagram at DJ Ola Seven, Facebook page at DJ Ola Seven Star FM, and also my YouTube channel at DJ Ola Seven uh, Star FM. Sounding good all the time. Iwaga, Kwanas, Pachurongochi on the spot. Tombo Mirapan. Stay tuned. <laughs>